So as an indie dev, there is this one tiny little issue you have. No one knows you. No one cares about you. No one loves you. Not even your own fam. Um, as an indie dev, getting the word out about your game is kinda hard. So today we will talk about a way to market your game and even make money in the process that many indie devs sleep on. But before full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Crazy Games, which is just very nice of them. We really like them, they are super nice people and it's our favorite web game platform. Also money is really good because eating is fun. Honestly, we wanted to make this video anyway. They have not told us what to say, but yeah, we might not mention which competitors are on the market. So, okay, marketing, marketing, schmarketing. It's not great. I just don't really like it as much as making the games. It usually involves annoying people on Reddit or TikTok or YouTube. Bye, my stuff. At this moment, we have worked on three different commercial games. Killboy 9000, a bullet heaven where you are the assistant to a robot toaster. It's already released. First First Fungeon, a fast-paced auto-scrolling RPG, and Backpack Battles, an inventory management PvP auto battler with crafting. Both of these have a demo and will release next year. And I would say we are doing surprisingly well. We made a generous demo for all our games. And I urge you to make a demo and make it as fast as possible. As an indie, no one has trust in you. So giving players something to play is the best way to convince them your game is not shit. To convince them your game is worth playing. It might be rough at first, but having a demo early gives you access to free playtesters. And with that you can react to feedback and have polished product for the Steam Next Fest for example. One thing I think too few game devs do is export for web. If your game is not too hardware demanding, there is no reason not to do this. Maybe you remember the good old times, playing flash games on the school computers. Flash is dead, but students are still bored. So this gap has been filled by other web game sites. Newgrounds is still around, though with less traffic, and of course our buddies at Crazy Games. Flash games were a huge part of my childhood and having players talk about how they play your game in breaks with their buddies. It's just so cool. I read a lot of discussions about whether a demo helps or harms your game sales. And I can assure you, putting a demo on browser game site will not harm your sales. I know where the idea comes from, but it's a mathematical thing. As an indie dev, you only reach a tiny fraction of the player base. There are many gamers out there. And the chance that the same guy finds you on Steam, finds you on a browser game site and decides the demo is enough so he doesn't buy your game are astronomically low. The people you reach from these sites are a pure bonus to your player base. No matter how little you convert to actual sales or wishlists, it's more than nothing. And they carry the word out. Maybe they make a let's play video about it or tell a friend. I know it's just scary to put an unfinished version of a game out there for people to play, but you waste potential if you just upload it on itch and nowhere else. Over all three games combined, we currently have 380k plays. Of course, it is somewhat uncontrollable how many plays you get, but you will be featured on the homepage for two days, which guarantees at least some visibility. An advantage of crazy games is that they are really relaxed with outgoing links, which is not that common. You are free to plug your store links and social media buttons wherever you want. When we first put up our game on the sites, I did not even think about the revenue share option. I wanted the wishlist. I wanted players to play our games. The site itself put some ads, but for the most effective ones, you will need to implement the SDK. Let's start with the tutorial part of this video. How to add the Crazy Games SDK to your Godot project. We will be working with Godot 3.5 for the moment, because the support for Godot 4 is not yet finished. But when it's done, it should be very, very similar. For Godot there is no specific SDK, like there is for some of the other engines, but you can use the HTML5 version. And this is how I found out Godot has a JavaScript singleton. So, fun fact, you can also use other JavaScript APIs in the same way. When you make a web export, Godot speaks JavaScript. To support the SDK, you need Godot to know where to find it. For this, go to the Export tab and add an HTML5 export, where you drop this line. I would advise making a dedicated build target, so you can export without the SDK as well. Let's call it Crazy Games. Go to Features and add Crazy Games as a custom feature tag. We can now always check in code if we are in the Crazy Games export by calling OS has feature Crazy Games. Let's make a singleton class that manages the SDK and call it Crazy SDK. We add it as an autoload, so it gets instantiated immediately when the game boots up. And we can reference it from anywhere in our code. Within this new class, we now need the JavaScript singleton to create a connection to the SDK. 
So now we can call functions on the different modules of the SDK object. For example, if we want to show an add video, we would call sdk.add.requestAd. Our game will keep running during the add. It's just overlaid. So we'd like to know if the add actually started, so we can pause the game. The function request add doesn't return anything, instead it will call back asynchronously. There is a signal for when the add starts, one when it finishes successfully and one when an error occurs. So we need three functions, define them all and give them an argument in their signature or else they will not get called. Getting JavaScript to call a gdscript function is a bit difficult. For that we will need to create a callback object that links to our gdscript function. These callbacks have to be declared in global scope. So I declared add started callback, add error callback and add finished callback and reference our gdscript functions. There is a small hurdle here. The request add function of the SDK wants all callbacks as part of a JavaScript object. So we need to make a JavaScript object and add the callbacks to it. When we declare a new object, the gdscript operations done to it will be translated to JavaScript behind the back, which boggles my mind. So now we can actually request an add. First, declare the type of the ad and then give it the callbacks object. There are two types of ads. Mid-game ads can be played when there is a natural break in the game flow, for example between rounds. You can also offer the player to watch an ad for an in-game bonus. Please don't forget to reward the player after that. I made a test scene with buttons to request ads. Just connect to the signals our crazy SDK singleton emits. Here we should pause the game, especially the music so it does not play over the ad. We can easily test this now. Export the project and rename the .html to index.html. Now go to developer.crazygames.com slash QA tool. Choose HTML5 and drag all files here. If you have a game page already, you can add the files there. After uploading, launch the QA tool and when we click the button, we get an ad. The SDK has many more features, such as detecting ad blocks and showing ad banners. There are these logs here on the left, but to get more info and to read your Godot prints, open the console in your browser by pressing F12 or under more tools, developer tools. So currently we get about 1k clicks a day for about 1 euro 50. The amount highly depends on how often your ads are shown, based on how well you place them and how long your playtime is. For us, this is far from financing the games, but it's money we otherwise would not have. And marketing wise, it has been far, far more effective than Reddit posts, for example. It's not to say you can't try to make a living making small web games. We did some calculations and it sounds quite reasonable. You can download this little demo project from GitHub. It will be linked in the description. You can use it as a template for your own integration. You can find more info about the SDK features and how to implement them in your Godot game in the documentation. And if you encounter issues, you can contact someone from the Crazy Game support on their dev discord or via email.